back to Case Files, where we dive into our players. In today's episode, we're going to take a closer look at Richie Grant, the strong safety. And we're going to determine, did the Falcons make the right decision in switching his position when he was a free safety coming out of college and transitioning into a strong safety for his second season? Let's find out. In week five, against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, I thought Richie Grant had an excellent game. Now, the Falcons' defensive scheme was a 4-2-5, and I'll showcase why I thought he did a marvelous job. Let's dive into the video. This is a very weird moment for Richie Grant because you can't tell where he is, and I don't think the defensive coordinator, Dean P, set him for success. So you clearly see right here, I labeled it where he's at the forefront where he has to go against, you know, 300-pounder offensive lineman trying to make a play but clearly he gets lost in the sauce because he doesn't have the full strength where he can maneuver properly enough where he completely misses his target we have a quick tempo buccaneer screenplay that tom Brady's is going to throw to chris godwin and trying to make the first down but i love that richard grant stands his ground by he pedals back but he watches tom brady where he's going and then he makes the right decision to tackle chris godwin to making sure he doesn't get any, any more yardage on this play i just want to showcase a couple times where nfl players do their job correctly but even though they might not get targeted it might not be shown by the audience but here is where Richie Grant does a good job in covering the tight end. This is an amazing stop by Richie Grant where he prevented Cade Alton from reaching the first down mark. Instead, it's a 4 from one because Richie Grant lowered his body to making sure that Alton can use his two legs to stretch for a first down. This is the only time he actually gets beat in coverage against Cade Alton tight end number 88 where he does an inside cross route where he gives enough wiggle room to create that two extra gap space where you know Grant just couldn't do anything about it. There's a reason why I'm not a big fan of cover two zones and plays like these really illustrates my point where you're giving Chris Godwin way too much wide open space without even going ag against anybody. Like, like if this was, this was a man-on-man -man coverage, I'd have been more fine with it. But since he's not contested with anybody else, he's wide open down the field and that leaves Richie Grant to try to prevent him to score a touchdown. On this play, Richie Grant shows you his attracting ability and acknowledgement of the game where he sees where Chris Godwin's going and he tackles him appropriately where he can't make any other moves. So on this play, this is clearly Tom Brady's fault because he throws it way too quickly for Mike Evans to get the proper adjustments to handle the ball correctly. So even still, I still like how Richie Grant uses his instincts to indicate where the ball is going and trying to make a play where Mike Evans, in theory, does not get a first down. In week 9 against the Los Angeles Chargers, I thought Richie Grant did an excellent game. So the Falcons defensive scheme was a 3-4-4 and he was all over the field. So let's just show you the video. On this play, take a close look at Gerald Everett, the tight end number 7, where he's shifting where Justin Herbert is throwing him the ball, but we clearly see that Richie Grant stops him in his tracks. We have a fake blitz zone coverage scheme going on here, and unfortunately it doesn't pan out because Justin Herbert finds his guy, Josh Palmer, easily for more yardage than he should have, and Paul just got boomed, bedazzled against this slant route where Richie Grant had to make a, a play to stop him getting more yardage. It's these type of plays that really hurt Richie Grant's stats or make it seem like he's not doing his job right. On this play, it, we can clearly see how Richie Grant is reading the running back and going through the tackles to make the proper adjustment tackle. So on this play, Justin Herbert gets pressured, so he has to go toward Michael Bandy, number 83, the wide receiver, to try to make a first down, but good thing that Richie Grant prevents him from doing that. On these particular type of plays, I call this defined punishment by the football gods because it could go either way for both teams, where they capitalize it or they don't capitalize it. Good thing for Richie Grant, he sees, he, he tracks the ball, and he clutches just because many times this could easily be a drop, and good thing for Josh Palmer where he just accidentally just tipped it away up where he couldn't connect to it in time. Sometimes there's nothing wrong being patient and being held back to making sure everybody's doing their job correctly because if they're not, plays like these where Isaiah Spiller goes through the defensive line and then he does get dragged by Rashawn Evans, but Rashawn Evans can't capitalize it, so that means Richie Grant has to support him to make sure that the running back can't go any farther. The reason why the Chargers couldn't convert a first down because the pass rushing specialist of the Atlanta Falcons made sure that Justin Herbert felt so uncomfortable in the 
the pocket, he had to escape and throw it to Josh Palmer where he wasn't in the most situational position to make a play. And that means that Richie Grant had a fantastic opportunity to making sure that he lose yardage and make sure he didn't get any yards. Right off the bat, the Falcons defenders are in a huge disadvantage because they're not in one-on-one -on -one individual matchups where clearly you can see right here when they're going forward, a lot of the Chargers offensive weapons are wide open where Justin Herbert could just pick which any one of them can get a first down easily. A lot of times players are dealt with bad situations that they have no control of and no matter what the situation they can come up with, it's not going to end well with them because plays like these where number 22 is going to cover Josh Palmer. But unfortunately he sees that the tight end is moving upward so he has to debate which one he has to cover and make sure the right one because plays like these where he gives Palmer wide open so that leaves Richie Grant is the last line of defense. This is an excellent job by Richie Grant when he's covering Gerald Everett, the tight end number seven, where he's preventing him to get a touchdown. And the cool thing about this is he's not allowing Everett to get wide separation where he can make it easier to get this touchdown. Even though we can clearly see that Justin Herbert kind of overthrows it, but even still, pretty good coverage. In Week 10, against the Carolina Panthers, Richie Grant had a bad game. The Falcons' defensive scheme was a 4-2-5, and unfortunately for Richie Grant, the reason why he wasn't having a successful game is because he angled wrongly, missed time, and poorly tackled everything that was around him. So let's just dive into the video. On this situation, the Atlanta Falcons could not stop Raheem Blackshear, the running back, to get this first down. So Richie Grant was the assisting character to making sure that he is eventually bring down because he was not touched. So you have to give credit where credit due where the Panthers off of the line created such fantastic hole where he couldn't even get touched before the second level. The reason why this play does not work well for the Falcons because they're going against Foreman who is 6'1", weighs 236 pounds, doesn't even get touched by any Falcon defender. So that leaves Richie Grant the impossible task to try to tackle him while angling incorrectly. On this play, I really like how Richie Grant just stays patient, even though he clearly sees that LaVista Chanel is moving around, so he goes towards him and tackles him to making sure he doesn't get a first down. There's a lot of plays where it just goes quick so fast, and you don't even realize what just happened before you hear the ball snap. And these are plays like these where Foreman just got that quick burst, and any of the Falcon defenders didn't know what hit them. And you can clearly see that Richie Grant is trying to do his best to tackle him, but we can clearly see he doesn't have the proper angle where he could take him down straight. This is a great play by Richie Grant where he's going to see the fullback Giovanni Richie getting open and then he tackles him to making sure he doesn't get any more yardage. So on this play, Terrence Marshall Jr. is going to use a dig inside route where he beats number 21, but unfortunately Richie Grant doesn't have the proper position to try to tackle him correctly and see he completely misses and so he tries to go after again but then number 54 eventually does. So the reason why I really want to emphasize this, because this is not Richie Grant's fault, it's his comrades, but even still, you're a team and you have to make sure you guys are in all cylinders with each other because plays like these can happen. So we have another defined punishment by the football gods, and unfortunately this time it doesn't pan out because this would have been a perfect touchdown interception, but we can clearly see that uh, Richie Grant just didn't have the proper angle to catch this and it was just way out of his reach. Ah, but so close. In week 12 against the Washington Commanders, Richie Grant had an average game. The Falcons defensive scheme was a 3-4-4, so let's take a closer look. I don't blame any Falcon defenders for not getting Terry McLaurin down because I don't like the cover scheme the Falcons were in because uh, Terry was in a cross route and for some reason he was just not in check. He was wide open to do whatever he wants and we clearly see what that brings to the table. This is a pretty good pursuit on Richie Grant's position because he's not going to get fooled by uh, Antonio Gibson's uh, running play. He finds them and scoops them up and definitely making sure he doesn't get a first down. Unfortunately, the Lando Falcons defenders did not set themselves up right where they had to stop Brian Robinson Jr. when he th went through the cracks because they all angled themselves pretty badly. And we can clearly see how Richie Grant is almost getting there, but he kind of gets stuck on number two, so that leaves a bad angle where Robertson could get more yardage. On this drive, the Washington Commanders are going to use Brian Robertson Jr. on a run play, and we can clearly see that everybody was trying to bring him down, but good thing Richie Grant had the assist. 
On this play, we can see that Jonathan Williams is going to be the running back for the Washington Commanders, and he can bulldoze and actually skate pretty well, but good thing that Richie Grant got the assist. Sometimes the football gods give you a gift from heaven when Tyler Heineke throws the ball to Antonio Gibson and then he falls down. So that gives Richie Grant the opportunity to make a clutch play so they don't convert on a first down. In week 13 against the Pittsburgh Steelers, Richie Grant had a good game. The Atlanta Falcons used a 3-4-4. Let's find out what happened. There's no shame in getting beat by a young tight end who is Pat Firemove, who does the most simplest concept of a flat route, where he gives himself enough edge where he knows he's going to have great separation for the first down. Sometimes you can't stop greatness, especially with this young tight end, Pat Firemuth, who just does it again with a good curl route, where this time he's getting double teamed from the inside and the outside, but even still, he catches this incredible ball for a first down. This is an excellent conscript that Dean Pease has created where he's going to use Richie Grant as the blitzer to razzle or second guess Kenny Pickett's choices when he was going to hand the ball to Najim Harris number 22, but instead he decided to grab it for himself because he wasn't uncertain what was going to happen. Unfortunately for Richie Grant, he has to go against Naheem Harris, who is 6'1 and weighs 232 pounds. And he just does this nasty juke move where Grant doesn't have the low ground, he has the high ground. So when he's trying to tackle him, Naheem just uses his arms to push him down. This is an embarrassing play for Richie Grant because he allowed Connor Hayward, a rookie tight end, to use some type of go route to get this wide open touchdown where Richie Grant should have stick by his man, not going forward, but actually going backwards to making sure that he didn't have, you know, over the top any type of situation, but clearly it didn't pan out. So this is a very interesting play that the Steelers are going to use. So look after number 82, Steven Slims, and he's going to run the ball. And Malik Walker is already there, but Richie Grant will help with the assist. We have another situation where Dean Pease will put Richie Grant in a blitzing type of package. And we clearly see he's kind of mimicking the tight end to see what he's going to do. But he sees that Kenny Pickett goes out and then he pursues the quarterback to make sure he throws it in completion. This is some great vision that Richie Grant uses where he's looking at where Najim Harris is going. And he goes through the tackle with ease and capture his men to the ground. We have another great play by Richie Grant where he's reading the quarterback where he's going. And Kenny Pickett doesn't find anybody that's wide open so he tried to go outside the pocket but then we can see that Richie Grant is pursuing him so he has to go out of bounds. This was actually a good blitz package right here but unfortunately they didn't count for Nigene Harris to escape so quickly and so that left him wide open and then Richie Grant quickly had him make a tackle but unfortunately he went upward to get this horse collar to add 15 more yards for the penalty so that just gave the offense a better chance of scoring a touchdown and you just can't get frazzled when situation happens like that. So what is the final verdict on Richie Grant as being our future starter for the strong safety position? I thought he handled himself with flying colors with totaling over 123 tackles, 70 solo tackles, 53 assists, no sacks unfortunately but he almost got close you know he was very close. Then he eclipsed two interceptions, so that was pretty cool. And then he got seven pass deflections. But there was clearly evidence he needs to clean his game a little bit because he's not playing as the free safety position when he was in college and his rookie year as the Falcons, so he needs to clean that up. But it's not really a problem because he only struggled in four games against the Rams, against the Bengals, against the Panthers, and against the Washington Commanders. I think next year will be his best year for the strong safety because he gets Jesse Bates on the other side to help him out to improve on his game. So I'm very excited about that. And he definitely has shown that he could step up for next year's. I'm very excited. So on that note, if you guys lasted this long to the very end of the video, thank you guys so much for taking your own personal time and day to watch this content. If you really like this type of work I do, please hit that subscribe button. It helps out your boys so much. So for the next episode is a mystery guest. So what do Falcons do? Rise up. Until the next episode, show love and peace to the world and peace.